Nick, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for coming on the 6-5, first time. Thank you. Good to be here, Patrick. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate. And we're continuing this uh, conversation talking about, first of all, holistically in the market, what clients are looking for mm. uh, in terms of the future of computing, uh, where hybrid cloud uh, comes into that. And hey, we're really lucky today because you run research for distributed cloud, AI, data, uh, everything. So thank you so much. It's great to be here with yeah. both of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You didn't use the, the E word, the edge, but uh, <laughs> Yeah, Nick, uh, reading your bio, first timer on the 6.5, super excited to have you here. Uh, you're covering a lot of ground. And I think as we sort of tell this future of compute story, you really can't tell that without talking a lot about what's going on in the distributed cloud. And, and like I said, the, the E edge, um, big story, big opportunity. I mean, we're all hearing the data numbers about the proliferation, exponential growth uh, and volumes of data and enterprises around the world and every other organization that uses compute is are focused on, on, on the opportunity at the edge. So I'd love to get your sort of take on how IBM perceives the edge, the opportunities, the challenges and sort of what you're working on in this particular space. Absolutely, Daniel. So when you look at edge, there's a key vector that plays a role here. And that vector is the increased disaggregation and decentralization that's happening from an infrastructure point of view. The emergence of cloud sort of suggested, you know, when you go back to 2006, customers would move their workloads from their data centers to cloud. And those cloud data centers would be in specific locations. As time went by, you had the emergence of more providers like Ridge, like Cloudflare. Compute got better, the advancement in AI with GPUs and so on, accelerators. And customers needed to solve problems at the edge in, a distant, in addition to moving their workloads to cloud. So that vector of disaggregation is a key one from an edge standpoint. Additionally, for us, when you think through edge, because of that strong rise in hyperscalers, there's this notion of edge in versus cloud out. What does that really mean? Cloud out simply means you take your cloud stack architecture and you run that stack on a customer's edge, whether that be a retail appliance, whether that be in a manufacturing uh, floor, a warehouse, what have you. Whereas edge in sort of lends itself to being cloud agnostic, but also really critically, elevating the data plane to a first-class citizen. From a cloud out point of view, the control plane dominates and data is not really first-class. We see that as a key differentiation for us as a company. So the industry has had a lot of changes over the last 30 years. And one of the biggest ones, interestingly enough, even though it's maybe 25% of the data uh, moved from the on-prem data center to the public cloud. And there were a ton of lessons learned there, right? It's been 10 years, you know, maybe it's glass half full where you would have expected more to go, more to be there if it were so easy. Uh, but, but there are some things keeping that from happening, but IT has learned a lot. Uh, what are some of the lessons uh, going from on-prem data center, colo data center to the edge that, that you're seeing, you know? good lessons of how to do it and maybe some things to stay away from. Yeah, fantastic question. So, and when you go back to that original trend that you highlight data privacy, obviously uh, compliance and regulatory issues as it relates to different geographies, obviously all played a role. And then the value prop that many companies thought they would be gaining by moving their workloads to cloud, namely to enhance developer opportunities, to grow new business, and certainly to reduce technical debt. Some of those didn't actually pan out. But really what still matters at the end of the day to an enterprise, to a CISO, to a CIO, to a CTO, the same factors rear their beautiful head. <laughs> Security, software delivery life cycle, uh, and overall manageability of that portfolio. These things continue to be relevant from an edge standpoint. And we see that to be true as we look at the various enterprise clients with whom we work as it relates to the innovation we're building for edge computing. Interesting. So IBM is clearly put uh, kind of an all-in uh, approach on a platform that has, uh, you know, basically common platform for your distributed infrastructure. That was a mouthful, but I got <laughs> it. Um, how does this provide an advantage? Because this is one of the things I think a lot about, and, and I do have an answer for it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Nick answer this. 
<laughs> Talk about why you've gone down that route, the advantage it creates, and kind of the challenges as companies are, are trying to move in this direction if they don't use that common platform. Yeah, fantastic. So the platform weighs into what architecture you ultimately are adopting from an enterprise standpoint as you go on that journey. At the heart of this all, you're trying to solve some sort of challenge that grows your business, right? Whether that be from a saving standpoint, from a revenue standpoint, that's really what an enterprise is aiming to address. Our platform, based on OpenShift and various extensions of that as it relates to footprint and location, so single node OpenShift, MicroShift, et cetera, running on a range of infrastructure, gives customers that flexibility as it relates to running their workloads on the edge to solve problems in quality control, for example, uh, retail ordering. You might have seen uh, IBM's recent acquisition in the quick service restaurant space with McDonald's. All of these are critical these types of workloads, whether it be in the case of uh, quick service restaurants, as far as natural language processing for order taking, whether it be for uh, visual inspection, for quality control in manufacturing, or a range of other applications, when anchored on that platform, right? The various versions of uh, Red Hat's platform that I mentioned, MicroShift, Single Node OpenShift, and Full Blown OpenShift, gives you an architecture with data and AI capabilities that we're building for what? Scalability. That ultimately becomes the challenge that you face moving from a proof of concept to getting into full blown production. So we talked a little bit of the green room about, hey, this, this edge thing is new. Well, okay, well, we've had compute on the edge for a long time. Uh, what changed? And I think we can agree that, first of all, there's a whole lot more data being electronically captured on the edge versus maybe paper tallying, doing cycle counts. It's, it's automatic when somebody takes a, a loaf of bread off the, off the shelf at a, at a grocery store. Um, and um, we finally have enough compute power and we have uh, machine learning algorithms to run against it that are, are very efficient. But listen, we've talked a lot about the infrastructure, but I think we, I'd really love to hear about the data. And, and I wanna hear about how IBM is leveraging uh, AI, um, machine learning, uh, and even let's say um, a distributed data fabric uh, to make all of this easier and, and more effective? Fantastic question. So, and I touched on this briefly a second ago leading into this uh, question. When you solve a problem initially and you demonstrate feasibility, uh, it gives you an idea of how practical that can be as far as addressing that issue, usually with AI machine learning, whether that be NLP, whether that be computer vision, what have you. When it comes to going from that proof of concept to running that model in multiple places, running many more models by, scaled by orders of magnitude in a variety of locations, that cannot be done with the same type of infrastructure. The anchoring platform helps, but you need an architecture that's scalable. And the scalability in that architecture, you're able to leverage that first vector we touched on, the disaggregation and in infrastructure. And that choice is up to the client, right? Whomever you've chosen as your hyperscaler provider, that's your choice, that way, that's where you'll do your model training. That model will then be served at a particular location, right? A retail branch, a warehouse, a manufacturing plant, et cetera, for some type of issue to address. And let's take the visual inspection one with manufacturing. You solve that issue, but then as you build more models, are you really going to take the point you made with all the data being generated at those locations back to the cloud? It's not practical. You need an architecture that allows you to take some of that back to the cloud. And what we do here is build a range of data and AI capabilities that are platform centric. So for example, imagine you've generated a ton of data from various locations uh, and now you need to retrain the model because there's no supervision there, right? When you pull up, maybe you still do, and I don't, uh, maybe none of us do anymore for that matter, and you order something at McDonald's and you say, I want a large fry and they got it wrong. Well, there's a way for the model to be supervised there. But if there's a shift on the manufacturing floor, no one's supervising that. You need a way to ultimately determine if that model has drifted. You need a way to determine if you can take that set of data that has been generated and only take a sample of it because the images are fairly similar. So we use AI and machine learning to cluster data so we figure out what goes back to the cloud, what stays on the manufacturing floor. 
we infer whether the model has drifted or not using a variety of techniques. And that helps with not only the onboarding of new models, but the ability to scale that infrastructure from plant to plant to plant. Yeah, Nick, no, no question there's a ton of opportunities and challenges being presented and federating certainly can help solve some of them. You know, I think about, you know, the examples that you give and we could certainly, uh, we certainly are an have the opportunity now with all the data at our disposal to keep getting better, to keep getting sharper and to improve all the different types of edges, the retail, the bread on the shelf, right? The next generation of shopping, certainly. And of course, factories of the future, the edge, the opportunity there, significant. But the challenges because of distributed architecture are still, they're palpable, they're significant. And Absolutely. something that we expect and we'll be watching as analysts for you and your team to continue to evolve and innovate upon. And Nick, we'll look forward to having you back to talk more about all the things you're doing at the edge, distributed cloud and more as part of our future of computing story. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you, Daniel. Nick. Thank Appreciate you, Patrick. It. Appreciate it. Pleasure.